Gamora can sometimes be a weird hero to get used to. I think a lot of people aren't used to playing a ton of events, and that's what you need to do for Gamora. Her build out is a little less so um you can play a very 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 event heavy deck uh this is what i would consider more of a hybrid for her not necessarily like a hybrid overall because again she's going to run less uh build out cards like upgrades and supports than most heroes but this is going to be focusing on more uh just event heavy cards with a couple of build out stuff so we're going to drop down to the table we're going to look at the cards in the deck we're going to talk a bit about strategy and then we'll do some practice hands so let's go check out her deck now, really quick, before we look at all the cards, um, I didn't mention that the link to this will be down in the description. And when you click on that link, you'll actually see 43 cards. And the reason being is because you can actually switch these these two. Uh, you wouldn't put both of these in. You just put one in, and we'll get into that in like a little bit. But let's go through her cards and talk a bit about this deck. Um, we'll start with the uh, allies and then work our way across. So for, as far as allies go... With Gamora, I'm using them to come in, do some damage, help her thwart a little bit, right? And and block for her. Because she only has 10 life. Well, not that she only has 10 life. She has 10 life. And you don't want to take too many hits. But there are ways to defend against attacks that she has. Or that she that she would take. So, first we have Rocket. I still like Rocket a lot as a Guardian um, ally. Uh, the two thwart really helps, I think. I think it makes him really good. And then just keeping minions away from you, right? Being able to do four damage against a minion that does overkill, I think is phenomenal. Martin X is great because Martin X allows you to get him in really cheap, which is helpful. Uh, next, we have Groot, who is going to be my main blocker, who I like a lot. And then we have Drax to help attack the villain. You'll notice this in a lot of my Guardian decks. I use the Guardian heroes a lot. And then finally, we have uh, Bug. Now, you could switch out Bug with a different Guardian hero. It um, doesn't really matter. You can use a different one. I just use Bug because I do tend to attack a lot with Gamora, so it would heal up Bug. But you can switch out Bug, right? It doesn't have to be Bug. You just put in another Guardian hero. That's fine. Whatever works best for you. Now, we'll get to that in a second. Let's actually move this over and first talk about... Um, the events we're running. All right, it's going to be a very event heavy deck. Like I said, we're focusing on aggression. And then our other six cards that were allowed because of her deck building is three from protection and three from justice. So next up, I use uh, Fusilade. 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 I don't know how to say it correctly. But I use a lot because you exhaust a weapon upgrade. You control to deal five damage to an enemy. We're actually going to have um, God Slayer in, which is going to exhaust, generally speaking. But the one that we'll have that doesn't is uh, Gamora Sword. Right? So Gamora Sword is a weapon upgrade. And like it says, exhaust a weapon upgrade you control. Deal five damage to an enemy. We get this into play. So after we play an attack event, deal one damage to an enemy. And then we could exhaust this sword to do Fus a lot. So I like this a lot. Anytime that your hero has a natural weapon that they can bring in that um, doesn't exhaust, I think it's always a, a good idea to use this. You could use Mean Swing too if you'd rather do that instead. Uh, but, I, but I decided recently I've just been playing that way. Okay, so now these two. I, you can either run three drop kicks or three into the phrase. Now, drop kick I like if we're not dealing with a stalwart uh, or steady villain and this allows us to deal four damage to an enemy if you pay for this card using only fist resources stun that enemy and draw one card now with the resource generators we'll have which is going to be combat or not combat uh martial prowess which is an attack event and generates a fist resource which is helpful and then she has two cards I, did I pass the one? Oh, yeah. Two, two keen instincts in there where you can exhaust and to generate a wild resource for an attack or thwart event. So if you have all of her resource generators out there, she can actually do dropkick very easily um, and be able to stun the enemy and draw one card. So this is the type of card I like if there's not a lot of minions in the deck, right? There's only a couple minions that to worry about, not a ton. I'll use dropkick. But if it's a minion heavy deck, I'll get rid of it and put it into the fray. We deal six damage to a minion for each point of excess damage dealt by this attack. Remove one threat from the main scheme. Now you'll be able to, uh, through how Gamora works with her main ability, where she has a response after you play a Thor event, deal one damage to an enemy. To get that enemy as close to like one life left. So when you do this, you can remove like four or five threat uh, from the main scheme to really kind of keep that down. It's also important to note that it doesn't, um, it just, it isn't a thwart action, right? It's just to remove threat. So unless there's one of those, I think it's like the exclamation point icon, the crisis, right? Icon. I think that's what it is. Uh, the crisis icon. Um, 
but the exclamation point that doesn't allow you to remove threat. But if it's the other uh, other stuff where it's patrol, right? Patrol would stop you from being able to thwart the main scheme. This will get around that, right? Because it's not a thwart removing action, but the exclamation point will stop you. So that's an important important note to know. Um, but anyway, so if I'm dealing with a lot of minions, I would put it into the fray. If there's not a lot of minions, I do drop kick. All right, so the other events, I like Momentum Shift a lot. It's an attack event. So again, her kit says uh, you may include up to six attack and or thwart events in your deck from aspects other than your chosen aspect. So this is an attack event. Heal two damage from your hero and then deal uh, two damage to an enemy. So once again, you can exhaust martial prowess to generate a fist resource for an attack event. This is an attack event, so this would work with this. And if you have one of your resources in, but again, it lets you heal up a little bit, it deals a little bit of damage, pretty nice. Um, so I like that card a lot for this deck. Then we also have clear the area, uh, one cost event. Now you couldn't use martial prowess, obviously, but you could use one of your resource generators on this. You remove two threat from a scheme. If it removes the last one, you get to draw a card, which I think is super helpful and super nice. So some people I've seen uh, do like multitasking instead. If you're dealing with a lot of side schemes, you could do that as well, or not as well. You could do that instead, right? So if you're only dealing with one scheme or like maybe one side scheme that's out there, Clear the area is pretty good, but if you're going to be dealing with a lot of side schemes, think about multitasking instead. All right, so then we have all of our doubles. I have referenced this card a lot. We have Martial Prowess, which again is to exhaust it to generate a fist resource for an attack event or a strength resource uh, for an attack event. We have Combat Train to increase your attack by one. We do have a 2 2 2 stat line, so be able to swing for three is really nice. We have Endurance to get a little bit more life. I like Endurance a lot more than most people. A lot of people, um, don't run endurance because they don't think they need the extra three hit points. And it's probably because they're better at the game than I am. But I still like running endurance a lot. We have nowhere. And this was uh, kind of a reference before with all the guardian allies. Most of my guardians deck decks run almost all guardian allies. Not I don't think all of them do, but almost all of them do. Because it's just so nice to be able to draw one card after playing them and to ex increase your ally limit by one. So I always do that. And then finally, we have God Slayer. It's a little tricky to get this card in, but I think it's worth it. So when your hero makes a basic attack against a unique enemy, which is the villain or any strong minions that are out there, you would get to exhaust Godslayer and your hero gets plus two for that attack. So we would be swinging for five for an attack each round, right, against the villain. Once we get this out and we have um, uh, combat ready. <coughs> Excuse me. So I think that's really useful and really helpful. So you can kind of see what we're doing here. So let's go talk a little bit of strategy. So like I said before, Gamora is very event heavy, right? You're going to be running a lot of event cards. And mainly because her main hero ability uh, states that after you play an attack event, you get to remove one threat from a scheme. Um, and then vice versa, right? After you play a thwart event, you get to deal one damage to your enemy. And so you want to do a lot of uh, attacks and, and different thwarting events. And that's kind of what we're, we're built out to do. Um, I generally want to get in early on her Resource generators are super useful. I think Gamora's Sword, if you can get it out pretty quick, is really good. Where it says after you play an attack event, deal one damage to an enemy. We have a lot of attack events in this deck. Uh, so to be able to use Gamora's Sword throughout the entire time is really good. So you want to get it early on. Combat training is nice. Martial Prowess is nice. And God Slayer is nice. And Nowhere is nice. After that, it's just run it through the events, right? Just run through her events and keep keep that going. Uh, get some blockers in when you can. Uh, keep track of uh, threat on the main or side scheme or wherever else. But that's really what it comes, that's really what, what it comes down to with Gamora is that you kind of have to read the board state constantly and you have to look out um, to see what's going on. But generally speaking, you can kind of just keep a quick pace, right? It's more of a tempo build where, yeah, you build out a little bit, but we're going to we're gonna go and we're going to attack and we're going to attack and build at the same exact time, which is kind of weird for some people, uh, but I think it's a really strong way of playing her. So we're going to drop down. We're going to do some opening hands and some uh, closing hands. I'm going to do this with drop kick in the deck and not into the fray. Um, but again, if you're playing a mini heavy deck, use into the fray instead of drop kick. If you're playing a, a deck with a lot of side schemes, uh, use multitasking instead of clear the area, right? So just important notes there. So let's drop down the table and go do some opening hands. All right, so let's do some opening hands with her. We'll shuffle up. Uh, again, you get to include six attack and or thwart events in your deck from the aspect other than your chosen aspect, which is really nice. And then her alter ego action ability is actually really cool. You get to look at the top card of your deck. If it's an attack or thwart event, you get to draw that card, which is really nice, um, especially early on because it gets you like seven cards essentially, which is a really nice hand size. So we'll start with six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so uh, double is really good. Nowhere is good. 
Do we want to keep Bug or somebody else? Uh, decisive Blow, we're just not gonna. It's not gonna make sense yet. Uh, we don't have weapons, so that doesn't make sense yet. The only reason I'm thinking about keeping Bug is because it allows us for an easy block early on and to get the uh, card draw. So we'll do three, four, five, six. Now we get to look at the top card. If it's an attack or thwart, we get to keep it. It's not it's an upgrade, so that just oops. Um, yeah, yeah, that's good. All right, so with this, I would flip up. I would use a double to play nowhere. I would use four momentum and decisive blow to play bug. Um, after a player plays a grand ally, we exhaust this to draw a card, which is the martial prowess, which doesn't help a ton. Um, so I would probably attack or thwart. Actually, what we do is attack one with bug, and then we could attack, and then this would heal bug back up. Or we could thwart, because I'm probably going to use bug as a blocker. Um, so that would be our first round. I'm going to get rid of Martin X. I'm going to hold on Martial Prowess. So three, four, five. Okay, cool. So next round, let's say bug gets hit in the face, right? He gets knocked out. That's pretty cool. Um, then it'd be our turn. So what I would look for in the beginning is I want to get a resource generator out. So I would use a double to put in martial prowess. Um, and we get to generate a fist resource. We can't do only fist because of this. So what I probably do is acrobatic move. Um, unfortunately we didn't get hit, so we can't use momentum shift, which is kind of a bummer. Yeah, we'd use Acrobatic Move to also remove one threat, most likely. Um, so that would help. And we can't really use this. So we would just attack or thwart. Um, I would probably actually get rid of Dropkick and hold on to Momentum Shift. And then draw back up. Two, three, four, five. Ooh, okay. So what's interesting with this is Cross Counter would allow us to prevent three damage. But I actually think I want to get hit because I want to use momentum shift, which is weird. I know, but I think I would get hit at this point because I need the resources. So I would do, um, I would throw away cross counter, let's say to play keen instincts. And then we can use both of these to play momentum shift, which would heal us up to deal two damage. Um, it's an attack event. So we also get to remove one threat. We could do set the pace to remove a threat and deal damage as well. Um, and then we could like thwart or attack and I probably flip down at this point and then ready up because we should be able to keep threat pretty far down and then we hit two, three, four, five, six. They would put a lot of threat in the main scheme now at this point. Hopefully it doesn't pop or anything like that. So it's our turn. We would look at the top card. Okay, it's our upgrade. Um, okay. So I would flip over. I would throw away probably two cards at this point. To play Nebula, in doing so, we get to exhaust nowhere to draw a card, which we know is a resource generator. I would actually throw away Endurance at this point, so we get two resource generators. Then we could do Set the Pace to remove one of the threat off, right? And we get to deal one damage. Um, oh, we got to search our deck for an attack or thwart event. I forgot about that. Um, so we could do that one. That's fine. It doesn't really matter. We could do another uh, acrobatic move to deal two damage. It removes one threat as well. And then we could use this to play clear the area. Hopefully we got all the threat off. So it allows us to draw a card, uh, which that doesn't help us right now. And, or we could have thwart earlier to get this down so that we could draw a card. Or if we were good there, then we can attack, right? And then we can attack there. Okay. So you can see how we're already pretty much built out. And at this point, uh, we have two, three, four, five. Okay, so we have some of our big cards. So this is one of the, one of the, the bad situations. If you get God Slayer and Gamora Sword at the same exact time, uh, you have to make some hard choices at that point, which really stinks. I would probably do, because we're only like three rounds in, depending on what the villain is, if they're still in stage one and we're not getting ready to flip them or move on, I'd probably go with Gamora's sword, most likely, but you kind of have to judge that on your own. So let's just say Nebula took the block, got knocked out, whatever. I would use Dropkick, and we just, again, use all three of these resources to Dropkick, stun the enemy, we get to draw a card, which is combat training. We dealt a lot of damage at this point. Um, like I said, I would dump three cards to play Gamora's sword at this point. Um, and then we can attack or whatever. Clear the area we probably don't need. And then we just keep on going, right? One, two, three, four, five. We're almost done with the deck. Uh, momentum shift, we get rocket. Rocket would be nice. Um, again, let's just say we took the hit, so we have some damage. We could use momentum shift to heal ourselves up. 
deal two damage. We could do uh, two cards and then clear the area, or a double and clear the area to play Rocket, which allows us to draw a card with nowhere. It's conditioning room, which isn't great. Um, and unfortunately, we can't do a thwart action, but we did do an attack with momentum shift, right? So we could deal one damage with that, right? Like we're kind of built out and kind of going out at this point. Maybe I would throw away four momentum just to play conditioning room. Uh, but you can already see kind of how she goes and it's just very, very, I'm building out a little bit, but you really just want to get your resource generators out there and you're just going to kind of keep going, right? You're just going to keep going fast and, and, and keep the attacks flying. Um, so that's the rough idea with, with Gamora. So let's do another hand, but later on, like we're trying to finish off the villain. All right, let's say we're at late stage of the game. Let's shuffle up. Uh, we have both of our keen instincts. We have martial prowess, god slayer, nowhere, and Gamora sword. Now let's just say we didn't get our extra plus one attack out there. That's the one other thing we probably want at this point. Um, but that's all right. So Martin X is out there. We were through most of our deck. We only have a little bit left. And let's just say um, we got to the point where we... Um, have two left on the villain right there yeah two damage left on the villain and we want to flip them and do 18 damage after that so we shuffle up we'll draw five cards one two three four five so we have acrobatic move all right so i'm going to just say hypothetically we have no damage so momentum shift doesn't make sense right now i don't know makes the most sense to me so what i probably do is we would play dropkick in the beginning. Actually, well, actually, no, no, I take that back. We would do Gamora, knock them down to the next stage so that they're down to, um, what is that? 18 life now, right? So now we do dropkick, exhaust all of these. Um, it would have been nice to have done God Slayer, but that's just not going to work out the way I would have wanted. So we deal four damage, so they're down to 14. We draw a card and stun the enemy. So they're down to 14. Oh, we have decisive blow. Perfect. So what we would do is, actually, no, we don't have a thwart event. I thought this was our thwart event, but it's not. Let us dump three cards to play Drax. We get to do nowhere to draw a card. It's uh, for momentum. Um, not super helpful right now. Interesting. So they're down to 14. Uh, this would be four more, so they're down to 10 life left, and we have uh, four, four momentum and decisive blow. I would get rid of this one, and then we ready up. Now, they are stunned from before. So don't have to worry about too much. So it's two, three, four, five. Also, we would have removed one threat from the one attack we did before, but that's it. So they were stunned. Nothing too crazy happened. So it's our turn. They're down to, what do we say? 14 life left, something like that. Um, actually, no. It have been uh, four damage, four damage. We've been down to 10 life left. So what we would do is set the plate, set the pace to remove one threat from a scheme. It allows us to deal one damage. So they're down to nine life. And then we do a double and decisive blow, um, which is a hero action. Deal four damage to an enemy, seven if you already played a thwart event. So they were down to nine. We did a thwart event. So they're taking out the attack. Allows us to, after you play an attack event, deal another damage. So that's eight damage total. Uh, they're almost dead and to the point that we could do decisive blow with both of our keen instincts. And again, we would do another seven damage plus one more. Um, we could do two, three, four damage, three damage, one damage, right? As simple as that. Once you get her resource generators going, it's much easier and quicker. Um, so that's kind of the big thing is you want those those generators really going to do your attacks and, and kind of keep the pressure on. Uh, but that's basically how you, how you would play her, right? The The... Keen Instincts is really strong, really good. Um, God Slayer and Gamora Sword are incredibly strong if you can get their, get them out there somewhat earlier. Uh, if I'm late game, God Slayer, I'd probably do late game, right? Just because I'm not going to be worrying about paying a ton of uh, attack events at the end, most likely. Um, and swinging for an extra two each turn, I think will just be worth more. But you can kind of judge that on your own. All right, hopefully you enjoyed this playthrough video. Hopefully this helps you out just a little bit. Like I said, there's a bunch of different ways to play uh, Gamora, but you're really just leaning into her attack and thwarting events um, and checking out what's out there, what makes the most sense for you, and just trying to build out her resource generators as fast as possible with that. So that's like kind of the rough idea to get, get the idea going. So anyway... If you enjoyed this video um, and want to see more like it, I recently did a playthrough of Drax. It's right here. And if you made it to the end of this video, make sure to hit like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Leave a comment down in the description. Let me know your thoughts about Gamora. And I will see you all next time.